chemical weapon, I'm not really sure. In a subsequent BBC interview, Dr. Rola Halam complained about the UK Parliament's refusal to authorize a military strike on Syria. Interestingly, Halam's father is also on the Syrian National Council, the political body which represents opposition militants. And if this all seems familiar, well, it should. A similar disinfo tactic was used to bolster support for the war with Iraq. They took the babies out of the incubators. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. That was Nurse Nayira, whose tearful testimony swung the pendulum in favor of war. After the vote was safely passed, Nayira, the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador to Washington, admitted to making the whole story up. Nurse Nayira and those faulty claims of weapons of mass destruction weren't the only lies told to convince America war with Iraq was necessary. CNN also did their part to play up the drama. Uh, CNN's Carl Rochelle is, is here with me, he just came up. Uh, Carl, I know we can't be very specific given these restrictions, but uh, within those parameters, what did you see? Well, what I saw, I, I didn't see anything hit. I looked very, almost straight above us. There is a vapor trail coming from my right to my left, and there's a cloud of uh, something. It looks like it might have been an explosion, a cloud. Uh, oh, I'd say... It, it, <laughs> oh, I love this country so much. These false flag mass media war campaigns are so typical, in fact, there's even a movie about it. Okay, good. Put the, put the village behind her. Give me some flames. Some sound of screaming. That's good. We can link that to the press. They can downlink it on Telstar 401 Transporter 21. And this just in, a news break special report from the Albanian front. We've just received information that the young Albanian national fleeing in this video is attempting to escape terrorist reprisals in her village. Even before television was invented, mainstream media was still lined to go to war. In 1895, William Randolph Hearst of the New York Journal sent his employees to cover the Cuban revolt against Spain. Lacking anything newsworthy to report, Hearst told his employee famed illustrator Frederick Remington, you furnish the pictures and I'll furnish the war. The establishment media continues to serve as the propaganda arm of the war machine. It is their job to file dubious reports as part of a campaign to build public consensus for ongoing interventions from Iraq and Libya to Syria and eventually Ukraine. <laughs> Boy, did I almost look stupid. <laughs> I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. Clean, toxic-free body is the foundation of true health. Introducing Deep Cleanse by InfoWarsLife.com, a scientifically formulated blend of nanocolloidal zeolites and organic ingredients that aid the body in cleansing chemicals and toxic metals. Using our proprietary multi-step extraction technology, Deep Cleanse is our most affordable all-in-one cleanser. With concentrated organic compounds like cilantro, milk thistle, fulvic acid, orange peel, zeolites, and others, Deep Cleanse doesn't hold back. Instead of buying five, six, or even seven different 
different cleansing products. We use decades-old scientific research to put together the Rolls-Royce of all-in-one cleansing. Look, there's a reason Deep Cleanse is the only product on the market that uses our proprietary Spigerex herbal processing technique. We use only the highest quality organic herbs backed by serious research, and we still bring it to you at the best price out there. If you wish to find Deep Cleanse and experience the all-in-one cleansing, visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, Oxy Powder, backed by real FDA-approved phase one, two, and three clinical trials. People are suffering from all kinds of digestive issues these days. All the toxins from the air, the food, the water, ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. My main focus was to come up with a remedy for this, something that's safe and effective that anyone can take on a regular basis to keep their intestinal lining clean. My recommendation is to clean your intestines at least two to three times a week to prevent the toxic buildup from going into your bloodstream. Take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with Oxy Powder. Secure your Oxy Powder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, a new Justice Department rule is going to make it harder for the feds to monitor your phones. This is effective immediately. The Justice Department just enacted a new policy that's forcing federal law enforcement officials to get a warrant before they can use the cell phone sight simulators, also known as stingrays. Of course, these devices are controversial. They collect massive amounts of metadata from large numbers of phones in a given area. Uh, so this is a huge problem. Now, the Department of Justice reaffirms its commitment to hold itself to the highest standards as it, as it performs its critical work to protect public safety. Um, you know, they say, they're saying that this new policy ensures our protocols for this technology are consistent, well-managed, and respectful to individuals' privacy and civil liberties. Ah, oh, freedom, it's so nice. Forgot to mention one major loophole. This does not apply to local and state law enforcement, only federal agencies. Now, it the policy only applies to domestic investigations by the federal law enforcement agencies that include uh, FBI, Marshal Service, and the DEA. It doesn't cover local or state law enforcement unless they are involved uh, in a joint task force with the federal authorities. So they can go ahead and continue scooping up all of your cell phone data without even disclosing that they are using these stingrays. Now, stingrays uh, trick cell phones into connecting with them. They act like a cell tower and they allow authorities to determine the location of a tracked phone. And in doing so, the equipment also connects with all other phones in the area and it allows investigators to collect information on people that haven't been suspected of a crime. So the, the device can capture your calls, text messages, emails, and other data. And of course, this technology has been adapted widely by local authorities, but they don't even tell you that they are using them. And of course, so you can't use that as a defense in, if you have to take it to court. Now, 
Let's talk about some other shocking video that has just been released. This is by the Dallas County Sheriff's Office. The video appears to show the moment a man died in the lobby there. Now, surveillance footage shows Joseph Sheldon Hutchison frantically running inside the Dallas County Jail lobby on August 1st, and his brother says the footage proves that deputies are responsible for his brother's death. This guy's up checking his phone. Checking his phone. My brother's no longer a threat to anybody or that he ever was a threat to anybody. Phone goes back in. My brother's squirming. He's probably hurt at this point. Here he goes. Hey, uh, uh, look at the knee. Look at the knee. Look at the knee. Look at him. Look at the pressure he's putting in him, man. They know they killed him right there. Now watch him. Watch him. Watch his body language. Oh, watch. He blows his glasses off. Watch. He's wiping the sweat. Now watch. Watch. Watch his body language. Look, I don't know, man. I killed him. Now watch. He tells him, get out of here. Go. Pointing that way. Go. You leave now. He's leaving. He's walking off. There's your killer right there. He's taking off. He's going back. He never comes back out. Watch when they pull him up. My brother's dead right now, man. He's gone. Now, following a month-long investigation, the Dallas County Medical Examiner determined that Hutchison's death was a homicide, and he blamed the combined toxic effects of cocaine and methamphetamine combined by hypertensive cardiovascular disease and physiological stress associated with struggle and restraint. And this seems to be something that happens a lot with people. I'm sorry, drugs are really bad for your heart, and when you combine that with the fight or flight, struggle and restraint, um, you know, this is something that has occurred many times. Now, there was also a lot of other bizarre instances with this case, which makes it, I can understand why the family is so upset. Uh, Hutchins's wife notes that in the days following her husband's death, the department uh, attempted to dehumanize him by saying that they had found drugs in his truck. But then two days later, the office, the, they corrected that and said there were no drugs. And also the family says that they were upset to discover that the organs in his throat were missing. They hired a private pathologist to conduct a second autopsy. So, I mean, obviously the first time around, maybe they had to take those out to show that, you know, it wasn't the knee to the neck or whatever that caused it. I don't really know, but obviously just some weird things going on. Now, a spokesperson with the department said that all six officers involved were reassigned several weeks ago. So they weren't fired. They weren't demoted. You know, they're, they've just been passed along elsewhere to another city to have to deal with. Now, this is obviously a reoccurring theme. This man walked into the jail, and yeah, he was acting erratically, but he said, please don't be scared of me. I just need some help. And you cannot call the police for help anymore. Time and time again, we're seeing you call the cops for help, and they end up killing the person who they have to go and help. Obviously, there's a training issue there uh, where they're needing to get some additional training to deal with people who are under mental distress. Now, obviously, I'm not bashing the cops. I know not all cops are bad, but there are some bad seeds, and it is also this policing uh, with impunity. Obviously, if you would have to pay for these mistakes out of a, a, a police pension rather than by the taxpayers, maybe there'd be some accountability. Until then, cops out there think you just need to obey them because their authority comes from God. This is a Texas sheriff, Randy Meeks. He published a guest editorial uh, in the local Herald Banner, and of course, he so cited every authoritarian's favorite Bible quote, Romans 13, and said, you know, the authority comes from God. Sorry, Sheriff, but your authority comes from the citizens who elected you to be Sheriff and who can also kick you out of office. So, like I said, you got to kick out these bad cops, kind of like this guy. You'll recall earlier this week that there were, um, you know, calls that uh, reports that shots were fired at a police vehicle in Boston setting off a huge manhunt, shut down schools and a number of other public buildings. Turns out that was a lie. The cop fabricated that entire story. He apparently crashed into a tree and just made the whole thing up. And he's been fired. So there you go. Obama's Justice Department accused a Nebraska meatpacking plant of racism because the company dared to ask its employees for their legal status, despite the fact that feds have raided similar plants in the past for hiring illegal aliens. The DOJ claimed that Nebraska Beef, LTD, required non-U.S. citizens, but not their similarly situated U.S. citizens, to present specific documentary proof of their immigration status to verify their employment eligibility. 
With the feds breathing down its neck, the business, Nebraska Beef LTD, agreed to pay Uncle Sam a $200,000 civil penalty and establish an uncapped back pay fund to compensate individuals who lost wages because they couldn't prove they were in the country legally, the Digital Watch reported. Additionally, the business will undergo compliance monitoring, which means Big Brother will be watching very closely. The head of the DOJ Civil Rights Division explains that the agency is on a mission to eliminate unnecessary and discriminatory barriers to employment so workers can support their family and contribute to the U.S. economy. You heard that right. The Justice Department is actually preventing uh, companies